Hello and welcome guys, this is yet another video by me Thomas and today it should be about my templating system once again and this one is on partials. What that is I'll show you in a second but first look at this page. It's the page we had last time and I changed the two variables uh, title and text to something different and as you can see it says this is how dynamic data could look with our templating system and I've made a spelling mistake. Uh, but we, but don't worry, we'll fix it later on. What's really important is that table right here. It tells you, well, I can make that a bit bigger. It tells you username and age. Well, age is going to be 18 and username is going to be Winfreak. Now, that is not just, you know, put into the template and you might be, oh, what is so special about this? You have just two variables and you replace them and technically you're correct, but the way I do is, is a little different. Well, first of all, let's look at our base template that we had last time, which is test.tpl.html. And underneath our paragraph, the text, we have a table here in square brackets. And this is where another file comes into place. And it was a dialog, I'm sorry. And this is this, table.par.html. It's basically a nice table with two variables, username and age. Now you might say, how do I include that here? How does that work? And that's exactly what a partial is. A partial basically is a little small snippet of an HTML thing that you want to repeat probably or that you want to put into your base template. Um, but you don't want to do it manually. You want to do that in your templating class. So you would need a function to include such partials. And now let's go back to the sketching board, which is a blank file. Um, first of all, we need to uh, think about of what we really want. So we want um, small HTML snippets uh, included into base template. Then uh, this is our goal, right? Then how are we going to do this? Well, I've proposed a, a procedure like so. Load the snippet into a temporary buffer, then process dynamic variables, and after that, put temporary, temporary buffer into template. And this is how we're going to do it. So we have first load snippet into temporary buffer, second process all dynamic variables, and third put temporary buffer into template. Why are we going to do that that way? Well, think of it as it as follows. Let's say you've got a, a a snippet like this, and you have another snippet, or your base template has a login form or a hello greeter, which says hello username, and then you have two times the variable username. Uh, if you would replace it uh, with the assign command, it will replace both instances, and that is really bad, right? So that would mean that you have the wrong values. And also, it would just be a mess. Now, what we also need to know is we need to know how do we want to call the, uh, the function or what parameters do we need from the user. Well, first of all, of course, we need the file path, the string or the variable, the partial should replace, and uh, also what we need is um, the dynamic elements of the partial, which are basically the variables that we can set with assign right now. And uh, the way we're going to do this, or how I proposed it to do, is I will show you that real quick in my index. This is it. I set up another, um, another folder, which is in templates, it's called partials, and I've got all my partials in here. And then I've set up another constant, which is the partials path. And I'm going to call this function render partial. And as you can see, it first has a search string, which is table here, as you can see here. And um, then we have our file path. And then we have an array, which is an associative array, of course. 
uh, with username winfreak at age 18. And this, uh, this also works if I would say a username equals to Josh. Then I open up my web browser, refresh, username Josh. So that is how we are going to design the function right now. And of course, this function also throws an error if you have no uh, file name supplied or if you have uh, an invalid file name supplied. So let's build it, right? To do that, we need to go in our templates.class.php and from there on, I will guide you. Okay, the file is now again what we had before I actually made this video or before I actually thought about the partial system. And what we first need is our, we need our um, temporary buffer, which I call the partial buffer. So we just create a new variable in our variables. And then we want to create a new function and I will put that before the show function, which is called render uh, partials. And this one takes, as we saw, different parameters. One is the search string, another one is the path, and the third one is the assigned values, as I might call them. Um, and this is, first of all, an empty array. Now, keep in mind that I always do those underscores, and you might ask yourself, why do I do this? Well, it's basically to keep those variables apart from other ones that uh, are outside of the function. And it's very neat, I think. So you have to develop a system for yourself to be very neat and be very tidy. So you find stuff later again. Because think of it like so. You also should do a lot of commenting. But I don't them in the video because, uh, to be honest, I comment everything that I code and these videos get around 20 minutes. So I don't need to write any comments in here. But if you code on yourself and you don't, happen to make a video about it you should probably make comments in your source code so you can uh, find around later on how to work with the code that you've produced because it might happen that even after three weeks you've totally forgot what that and that does i had that case so keep in mind always do comments and always keep your work tidy and clean so you can understand it later on right so what are we going to do first? First of all, we're going to check if uh, our search string is not empty. Remember, our search string is basically the stuff in the square brackets. So the stuff that we're going to replace later on. And if so, we want to check if the file exists, if, if our path exists, if our file name exists for the partial. And if it does, we will, we will go ahead and do it. And if it does not, we want to have an error. And in that case, we can copy from above where we have the template error, which is the file inclusion error. And now I want to say instead of file inclusion error, I want to say um, partial inclusion error. And now what we can do is we can say that if this file exists, we want to load it. And we want to load it into our partial buffer. So this partial buffer equals to file get contents, file get contents of path. And if that happened, now we need to go ahead and basically go through all the, 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 the values that the assigned values array has in it. So we need to check if that is again to save resources, if the count, so if the element count of the array uh, assigned values is higher than zero, we should process them. And if not, we don't. And, um, well, uh, what are we going to say here? We're going to work with the buffer. This partial buffer equals to um, string replace. But we can't yet just do this. We first of all have to iterate through all of the assigned values like we did in the uh, previous video. So we need to get in for each, and the variable is the assigned values as key value pairs and now we can place that thing into here this partial buffer equals to string replace subject is going to be this partial buffer again uh, if you wonder what the subject is and why i'm equaling that um, it's basically because you have to think of it string replace is a function which gives back text it doesn't just you know manipulate the string that it has you have first of all the search parameter then what to replace it with, and then where it should search in. And then, basically, I take the text that string replace gives me back, and I rewrite the variable. Or I overwrite the variable, I should say. 
And uh, well, what do we want to search for? We want to search for string to upper, string to upper of key. Or as you might remember, our structure was that we had an open curly bracket and uh, then the string to upper key and uh, a closing bracket, a closing curly bracket. And we want to replace it with the value. And uh, that's it for dynamic uh, variable uh, replacement. And what we need to do now is we uh, need to, basically, we can go out of that if, we need to replace um, the search string in our main template with the partial. And to do this, we say this TPL, which is our template temporary buffer, uh, equals to string replace. Search string is our, um, basically our uh, key in the uh, square brackets. You can, as I said, of course, change that to your likings, but I preferred that way. And now we also have a search string in our variables that we take and we will replace it with the temporary buffer, with the partial buffer. And again, we want to search in the, this uh, TPL. So you can basically say that every time you have such a string replaced and then when you want to replace something in a variable, the subject is what you're going to equaling it with. So the variable you're equaling with is also the subject. And uh, now, what we want to do to be a little more tidy, uh, I do this out of uh, psychological reasons. I don't know if it really helps to optimize code or something like that. Um, but here we have the partial buffer and I want to clean it out. Because there's some uh, HTML rubbish in there now, which we don't need anymore, so we clean it out by just making it an empty string. And that's it for, the, for our template class. We should be good to go. And now let's go ahead and test it and see if it still works. Well, first of all, let's try to uh, call this with our uh, empty array. So we just remove all this and it should still show. And we get an error. Well, that is spectacular. I didn't think of that we should, should do this. Template are classically render partial, not partials. And um, now we refresh and we see that something didn't work. And that is because uh, I forgot to also set that to string to upper. So you can see in software development, nothing is perfect. Uh, so I'm not, but here you can see this is our string replace. You want to uh, string replace, open curly braces or open, bra uh, open the bracket string to upper the search string and then closing bracket. And this should be uh, now it. There we go. And you can see that we have two variables, username and age. Now we try to replace them with our little script uh, by just extending on uh, the array that we've supplied here. Username equals to winfreak and age should be it. You can supply this as an integer or as a string, however you want. There we are. So everything works now. And why is that important? It's important to keep uh, the structure of your uh, templating system correct. You can also, you know, man manually do all of this every time you want to have a partial. Or you could just make a neat function like this and uh, include it or, or call it every time you have a partial. So I hope this helped you out. And if you'd like to see a new function or if you have any questions, just ask me in the comments below and I will try to make a, a good video about it. And I also hope you like this video. So see you in another one. Goodbye.